Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today, let's have a look at one of the most popular groups in the world right now, Blackpink. Before that, if you are new here, please like, subscribe, and turn on the notification so that you won't miss any future videos. Without further ado, let's begin. In this video, I will be talking about various aspects of Blackpink's past, present, and future career. First, let's have a brief look at their achievements. Blackpink was the first girl group to debut under YG Entertainment in six years, after 2NE1. They were an instant success, both their debut singles charted number one on Billboard World Digital Charts. Blackpink released their second single album, Square 2, with the lead singles, Playing With Fire and Stay. Playing With Fire became their second single to hit number one on the Billboard World Digital Songs chart. Blackpink's commercial success earned them several rookie awards at the Korean year-ending award shows. Their later singles became chart-topping as well and became the highest-charting Hot 100 hit ever by an all-female K-pop act, opening at number 55. In fact, they are the only K-pop group to reach 1 billion YouTube streams for a single music video. Later, on July 7, 2018, they became the first overseas girl group to perform at Kyocera Dome in Japan. In the late 2018, English singer Dua Lipa announced Kiss and Make Up, a collaboration song with Blackpink. It debuted at number 93 at the Billboard Hot 100, marking Blackpink's second entry in the chart and making them the only Korean girl group to score multiple entries on the chart. The same year, the group signed with Interscope Records for a global partnership with YG Entertainment to promote outside Asia. This helped them to make their American debut. On February 9, Blackpink performed at Universal Music's 2019 Grammy Showcase. The group has since appeared in several American television shows in February 2019. After the release of their second EP, Kill This Love, in April, Blackpink performed at the Coachella Festival and became the first female K-pop group to do so. Their song, Kill This Love, also made it onto Billboard's list of the 100 Best Songs of 2019, ranking 66. The impact Blackpink have is just phenomenal. In September 2019, Blackpink became the music group with the highest number of subscribers on YouTube after surpassing British boy band One Direction. Blackpink also made it into Time Magazine's list of 100 rising stars. All the members of Blackpink are in the top 10 list of most followed Instagram idols and Lisa leading with over 31 million followers. In March 2020, Blackpink reached 11 million followers on Spotify, surpassing Fifth Harmony and Little Mix, thus became the most followed girl group in the world. Even though Blackpink is dominating the charts and touring around the world, things don't look that great for them in their home country. They are often the targets of hateful comments, especially members Jenny and Lisa. They have been the center of controversies since the debut. There is a lot of situations that shows mistreatment towards the members, mostly from their own company. So let's dive deep into each one of these. Blackpink, one of the most influential group, is also one of the most hated group in K-pop. But why are they getting this much hate? The main reason for the hate is their instant fame. Blackpink had a huge fan base even before their debut. They became the group with fastest music show win in 13 days. They rise into fame so quickly, despite being underworked by YG Entertainment. They have only 13 songs in three and a half years, but somehow, they are up there with Twice and Red Velvet in terms of popularity. This gives them unwanted hate from other fandoms. Another reason for the hate was the way YG compared as both girl groups. Calling them pretty version of 2NE1 made the Blackjacks angry and turned their back on Blackpink. But YG does everything for a reason. I will explain about this later in the video. YG has always been known for mistreating their artists. Especially their female idols. You can see how their male artists are allowed to have music freedom since their rookie days, meanwhile their female artists always end up not getting that until late in their careers. It looks like YG doesn't want a female group to be the face of the company. Even though Blackpink is the most popular YG group, they still don't get that many comebacks as Icon and Winner. 
YG controls them entirely. It makes them apologetic pawns, especially when treated that way when they were young trainees. Even though they are the most popular group, they are not considered as the most successful. The main reason for that is YG's horrible management. They have very few songs for a group of four years old. When less songs, less the music show wins, and less D sangs. It basically shows that YG made this group just to make money. And he makes it even without their music. In case you are wondering what I meant, Blackpink has endorsed and collaborated with several high-end brands including Puma, Reebok, Louis Vuitton, Adidas, Dior, Moonshot, Scott London, Sprite and so on. When busy with other stuffs, only less time for comebacks and practices. Also we all know how much the award shows help a group to reach to a wider audience. But YG doesn't care about that. Out of all the year-ending award shows, Blackpink didn't attend even one. But they appeared in almost all the important fashion programs that took place last year. We can't deny the fact they are called models, instead blame YG Entertainment. Blackpink's 2019 In Your Area Tour became highest grossing world tour for a K-pop girl group. But the Burning Sun scandal, Jenny's dating news, and B.I. attempting to purchase drugs all had worst effects on YG Entertainment. In fact they reached only fourth in the list of best K-pop companies. Also YG Entertainment dropped down to number 5 among the top-selling K-pop companies of 2019. When coming to artist management YG Entertainment might be the worst. But YG himself was one of the best businessman K-pop have ever seen. His media plays were something K-pop industry have not seen. He always used his most popular artists to gain attention, but not in a good way. For example, cutting out members from a group picture or excluding Lisa from the Twitter posts about Blackpink and so on. He don't care about what the idol have to go through. Only thing he cares is the popularity and money. As I mentioned before, he literally called 2NE1 ugly during the Blackpink's debut era. He made a controversial topic so that the debut news will reach to more people. YG is planning to debut Baby Monsters, a new girl group in the late 2020. And trust me, there will be a controversial news that is related to Blackpink just to spice up their debut. He has been doing similar things before each Blackpink comeback too, just to gain more attention from netizens. Everyone show their anger at YG Entertainment for not letting girls have a comeback, but have you ever thought why exactly is this? A big reason for their less comebacks are the blinks itself. YG knows how big and dedicated the fandom is. So, it doesn't matter whether it is a commercial or a fashion show appearance, if Blackpink is in it, it goes viral. Being a businessman, YG's intention is to make money with less effort. So instead of spending on music video and album production, he spends it on world tours. He know Blinks will support them no matter what. Basically he is just using fans' love towards the group for his own benefits. Even though they are losing some fans, they are also gaining new ones day by day, especially in the West. If Blackpink's popularity rise up even without songs, more comebacks and solo projects within a year is very unlikely to happen. Trending tweets or placing a billboard outside YG building is not gonna help much. Now the condition is so serious that even members have started asking for a comeback. For those who are new to Baby Monsters or Bone Bay, they are rumored to be the new girl group from YG Entertainment. The final lineup is not revealed yet. But some of the members are contestants in Chinese survival show, Youth With You. In January 2020, YG Entertainment trademarked the name Baby Monsters. Later in February, they also trademarked Bay Mon, this may be a nickname for the group, or it could be the name they'll go by in Korea because of the easier pronunciation. Moreover, Blackpink will be promoted mainly outside Korea, but Bay Mon will be YG's Korean group. There will be many changes after this group's debut. YG Entertainment will be mostly concentrated on Bay Mon and Treasure, who also is planning to debut this year. Being a senior group, Blackpink will have more control over their music production and writing. Anyway, for now let's all wait for Blackpink's most anticipated comeback. The comeback is around the corner, as Jenny teased fans with a studio selfie. So, let's see what we can expect from this album. The comeback has been postponed multiple times. But it's most likely to happen in the month of June. 
The fact that they already had past comebacks in the month of June confirms my doubt. And then comes the next question. A full album or a mini album? The groups debuted with Blackpink have triple the songs as them. Around 400 days later they are having a comeback. So it should be a full album. But I'm having trust issues with YG Entertainment. So I feel like it's going to be another mini album. Their concept will be similar to their past comebacks. YG will be showing their black side more than the pink one, because that's what the Western audience are most intrigued of. Also it's easy to have an impact on first-time listeners of Blackpink. The title track will be written and produced by Teddy Park. A powerful music with a strong choreography is highly expected. Jenny will get a better rap verse than their past songs. As usual, Lisa will have the least lines, but she will have a dance break. The song will also showcase the vocals of Jisoo and Rosé very well. With this new album, and also featuring on Lady Gaga's new song titled, Sar Candy, Let's Pray Blackpink will be more active in music industry. See you all in my next video. Till then, peace.